Okay, so this is your exercise number three. Let's first uh, calculate the linear approximation and check our answers together and exchange question and answer and do second derivative as well. All right. What was it? The derivative of inverse is given not in terms of x, in terms of y, and there's no x in it. But if it is an implicit differentiation, we can always carry these two things, right? It's not explicit in terms of x, so we are using all both x and y coordinate, so that's why I'm carrying it here. But you already know that for implicit differentiation for inverse function, it only involves y value. So you only have to, but I'm just going to carry it like this to, to, for, the, for general case. Then you don't use x equals 2 because the formula doesn't involve x in the y equals 1. That's 1 fourth, right? The value of a derivative is 1 fourth there. Therefore, is the b value there, 1 plus derivative of that x value, x equals 2, which happened to be using just y value, is 1 fourth, times x minus a, which is 2. In expanded form, 1 half plus 1 fourth x. Any question? That good? All right, we already have um, formula for the second derivative. Let's go for a quadratic approximation. All right, was that okay? So here's the formula of the second derivative. Yes, Seth, Andrew. All right, so if you sketch that just around x equals 2, it's going to resemble the shape of the y equals f inverse egg. You sketch it from flipping the original function, right? That shape looks a lot like this quadratic function. That's what we have just accomplished. And the problem that we skip. This is, uh, I think I should do this one. Uh, it's not going to be an exercise. All right, look at this problem itself. x cubed plus x equals 3, right? Okay, so how do you solve this equation? Only method that is introduced in this course is? Solving an equation? There's no calculus at all, it seems like, right? Yeah. And we didn't use calculus to solve this one. What did we use? No? You just repeated this like six times, remember? To get to the answer of this one. Bisection? Bisection method. You shook and then you did it six times. Oh, it's almost there. That's one method, right? Repeating it five times. But you can turn this around with... Um, with a slightly different method using this quadratic approximation of the inverse, right? So idea is that, okay, if 3 is close to 2, you know the secret about 2, right? This one's easy to solve than this one, right? Because x equals 1 is a solution, right? And this one with the x, uh, this being 2 and x equals 1, we know about this setting. We know the inverse, right? So we're going to figure out the inverse of this function there. And if you plug in x equals 3 to the inverse, you're going to get something, right? Using, um, I'm going to call that one c. We don't know the formula of f inverse of 3, but we know approximation of f inverse of 3, correct? Therefore, if we use approximation, you're going to get approximate value of c. Good enough? Right? Yeah. So, what does it really mean? Is f of c equals what number? Three. Three. Yeah. But what is f of c? In formula, that's correct, we don't know, but if it's in the formula, it's a c cubed plus c, right? That is supposed to be equal to three. Okay? So, if you want to do this one, Reverse it, which is the inverse. Stick 3 into the inverse function, and that's supposed to be the answer. This is a really fancy way of looking at an equation. Okay, let me s say that again. There is a function. See when you how you arrive at a 3, right? Reverse it. You start with a 3, reverse this function, you, en you end up at the original input. 
That's fancy way of solving an equation and the description. Fancy description of solving an equation. So if it's taken three to the inverse, that's the same as solving an equation. <laughs> Correct? Right. So what was f inverse x roughly? Right, 1 over 2 plus 1 fourth x minus 3 over 64 x minus 2 squared, right? This is approximate. This is supposed to be good approximation as long as x is close to what? 2, right? This is, this is approximation around where? x equals 2. And x equals 2 still remain there. So x equals 3 seems like close enough. And then you stick it in there. x equals 3 there. Fair enough? All right, let's do that. C is exactly supposed to be the C that we are solving for here is exactly F inverse of 3, right? But it's approximately equal to 1 half plus 1 fourth times X equals 3 there, right? And X equals 3, that makes 3 minus 2, 1, right? So it's a 3 over 64. Pretty neat. I want you to go ahead and calculate this as an approximate value down to, let's say, four decimal places. Can you do that for me? I'm sure it's a number around one point something. So can you calculate this one, the decimal? Realize that I wasn't recording it. Maybe I don't know where. I, this key thing is that this three is going into the inverse and rewrite it like this and convince yourself all I have to do is compute that f inverse of three. But make sure you write it into a statement you understand better, f inverse, right? Fair enough? All right. I think you're ready for the x to the 